I mean, I think religious and political spirit, once they start working together, I think there's a there's a powerful deception in that. And um, we've got to be careful that we don't buy into either or both together. You know, right. There's a danger, particularly in the prophetic movement, seem to become very political, <laughs> sadly. Um, yeah. But very, very much to a particular flavor, um, which is like, okay, but there's an assumption that God is going to be partisan. And I think that's the problem. There's lack of respect and honor for those who have different political views. And, I, you know, I've heard some people say, well, you couldn't possibly be a Christian if you're a Democrat, you know, and I'm like, well, that that's just so dishonoring of the person's right to choose whatever they want to support politically you know just because there's a political position doesn't mean that they can not have a love god or that type of thing so there's definitely a, a problem um that seems to come from one side of things when it comes to these political issues um and you know you've got a we've had a an election year this year um which uh, was very interesting to see what happened and the results and, you know, uh, and whoever you support, there was obviously an agenda for people who wanted to change. Um, and, but I found looking at political issues around the world, there is becoming less of a desire to support one party and more of a desire for consensus. So you've got a lot of, hung parliaments and need for coalitions um, in countries that don't normally have them. We've had South Africa have a coalition um, because the ANC lost their majority and they needed actually the Afrikaans party, I think, to support them, which is very interesting. Um, and the same in India um, and, and in France, they're still trying to come up with the government in France. Um, because the left and the center came against the right, um, which is very interesting times with far right groups. So, but none of these things have got anything to do with the kingdom of God. And God is not a political animal. And he very clearly, Jesus said, look, my kingdom is not of this world. You know, I'm not come to create a political kingdom, even though they wanted him to. They obviously wanted him to, so England, you know, Israel would have the kingdom established once again, and they had become the center of the world. You know, that's what they wanted. Well, that's what they thought they wanted. But Jesus very clearly said, no, that's that's not what it's about. And we need to see God's kingdom, which is a government of peace and love. And I don't see that many governments operating in much peace and love. Um because they're coming out of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You know, all political systems, all religious systems are really created by men um, and they're not going to succeed in establishing God's kingdom and you, you can't do it politically. And I know Christians would love there be a Christian president and a Christian prime minister and a Christian party, but they aren't. And even if they were, that doesn't guarantee that they would establish God's kingdom because they work within a political system. You know, so we are in a difficult, difficult scenario in that these things aren't working, but we've not yet got God, God's kingdom fully established and filling the earth. Um, and God's way of changing things is one person at a time. You know, and that takes a change as people's mindsets change and they come into uh, a government of peace and they look to see peace and love operating. You know? um, but yeah, very interesting to see you know, what people's positions are and yeah, all of the sort of fake news and AI generated news, which people just believe. I think it's so important that we know the truth in these days. Yeah. Yeah. The truth is truth is the key. You know, he God hates a lying tongue and it's just lies in the air all around. Just it's hard. <laughs> yep. It is hard. And it's hard 
you know, I, I try and take a neutral stance in that, obviously, you know, I mean, I'm in the UK, so I've not got an axe to grind in other, any other country. So I try and take a neutral stance and look at, OK, how do we see God's kingdom? And we're not going to see it by trying to use a political system to establish it. Yeah, that much is true. Whichever political system in, in your country, you've got sort of essentially a two party system, um, which has developed. Neither one of them are going to establish God's kingdom. And you just got to accept that is the truth. Therefore, let's stop trying to find a political solution to problems which are primarily spiritual. You know, it's a spiritual issue. It's people. And when people begin to engage with God, people begin to change. And if more people change, then culture and society will change and God's kingdom will be established. But it is leaven leveling the whole lump, not a massive revival, not Jesus coming back to establish a kingdom in one go with a magic wand. It is people who who begin to engage God and then begin to change and outwork God's kingdom. You know, that that for me is the only way the kingdom of God is going to fill the earth. It's not going to be, you know, all one go. It is going to be bit by bit by bit as more and more people embrace God's kingdom, love, a relationship with God, establish love, operate in forgiveness, outwork righteousness, and the kingdom of God being righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit, a joy economy, a well-being economy, all these things. You know, we're not going to do it by capitalist system, communist system, any other system. Every one of those isms and ideologies and ologies are all based out of man's humanistic seeking a solution. None of them are going to work. We may prefer some better than others, but actually when you look at what it boils down to is God's kingdom is going to change things through grassroots people changing rather than we're going to change it politically or any other way and obviously war is never the solution revolution is not the solution transition is and i think that's what jesus was trying to say when he looked at the kingdom of god is like leaven you know you can't really see the leaven in the dough ultimately it will start to bubble up and produce a rise and it will eventually begin to change things but it takes needing and it takes time and it takes proving and then reproving and sometimes it looks like all the air has been knocked out of it and then you've got to need it again all these things i think jesus was trying to get over a point there to ensure that we didn't go off at some tangent and try and do it our own way and let's look at look at history look at what christians have done through history of trying to force people to become followers of Jesus by the sword, you know, through all sorts of different means, Christendom, you know, the papal system, you know, so many different ways using a completely non-peaceful solution. And well, yeah. yeah. You know, you need a little bit of salt to make it tasty. <laughs> yeah. Politics is not my favorite subject because i just see you're never going to please everyone whatever you talk about it is never going to be the solution and you're going to upset someone who supports a different party or thinks you're being biased towards one or another you know i just right. want god's kingdom to be established i want people to start loving one another operating in honor and respect and treating people in the way that they want to be treated themselves you know and and that means you know looking after each other rather than wanting a particular political viewpoint that's going to be the solution because it isn't and most political things unfortunately are divisive you know if you get 48 percent voting for one there are going to be 48 percent people unhappy if 52 percent vote for somebody else and that is never going to create a peaceful environment if people are unhappy part of the problem is in the past people would accept that is now the government now people don't accept this as the government they're going to riot or they're going to oppose it in some way or they're going to 
do something which is is not peaceful and that's not going to be helpful when you know for the next four years half the population virtually are unhappy um and the other half are sort of happy um but it never really works anyway okay any, any anything else you want to talk about good morning mike hiya jackie yeah that that was good i i uh i totally agree with you when I think about it, it's like I'm the change. I'm I'm the change. I'm the one that has needs to get before Father, stay in Father's heart, and release whatever it is that I'm feeling and sensing in His heart, to, and then let Him change me. Yeah, you know, I'm the salt and the light up there. Yeah, and that's what I was, you know, I come around to. <laughs> well, it's true, um, and I think how we treat people who have differences of views and opinions is the important issue yes it's so important that we treat people with respect and we respect people who have a right to have a difference opinion we don't have to fall out relationship shouldn't be at stake over political issues religious issues they shouldn't be at stake over anything yeah you know, we can have different views and still be in relationship and still be friends you know, it's, everything's become so divisive. And I think the enemy's way of doing things is totally contradictory to God's. And I think, you know, when I was starting to engage the angelic realm around, OK, how do we look to find peace on Earth? And there were there were definite angels that had agendas uh, which were godly. And there were angels, fallen angels that had agendas which were the opposite. And what God showed me was. His kingdom operates in a in a union which brings cooperation and covenant, family and peace. You know, so you have a union of people who are working together and that establishes covenant in which people work together, work for peace. We're peacemakers and that we're family. You know, we're not different tribes. We're, we're all one family. The enemy does the opposite. He wants he wants divide, division, conflict, competition, and ultimately tribalism to, in a sense, operate and bring the world into disruption. Peace is what God wants. So he wants to everything to be established on the basis of peace. If you operate in conflict and look at warmongering and all of the other issues that come around you see so much division around so many people are fighting either physically or politically or they're fighting in different ways there's conflict and even within the, the christian church i mean how many people are in opposition to one another over doctrine and beliefs how many dominations are there how many different viewpoints are there that make it difficult for people to be together in family you know the church is one family in fact all people are one family those that know they're one family should be working together in relationship but often they don't you know often they don't work together in relationship and it causes divisiveness and enmity and strife and all of those negative emotional things that that cause relationships to break down you know, relationship is the way God has established things because God is relationship. You know, the perichoresis of Father, Son, and Spirit in a relational dance. Um, that's God's desire for that we would be in that same relational perspective. And you can't do that if you don't respect each other and give each other permission to think differently. God made us different. You know, respect, honor the difference, celebrate the difference. You know, we don't have to be the same. Yeah, but ultimately, religious denominational systems want to make you the same because they want to form. You must believe this if you're going to belong to us. And unfortunately, that divides everybody around their beliefs. And you know, God wants us to be united around him. The union that we have with him, that we're all his children. You know, we are the children of God. 
God loves all his children equally. So let's treat each other as if God loves all his children equally. Therefore, we love each other equally in the same way, you know, and unfortunately, there's a lot, there's a lack of love, a lack of love within obviously the political arena, but definitely almost within the Christian arena as well. There's a lack of love. There's a lack of honor. Um, um, and, you know, I realize that what I believe is very different from what other people believe, but other people have got the right to believe those things. Hopefully we'll all find one day the truth is Jesus. And we were all just looking to get to discover that truth. And eventually we come to the fact of none of us knows the whole truth right now. But if we keep close to Jesus, we will begin to discover that he is the way, the truth and the life. And we don't need to try and independently work out what's true based on our reason or understanding or any other thing don't lean to our own understanding you know let him reveal what is true and i think ultimately if we look to follow the truth we will be much more discerning and able to love one another um, you know jesus made it really clear look this this is the new commandment it wasn't a new law it was a new commandment which was a new goal to be loved by him and love other people in the same way. So the key is, let's all be loved. God wants to love us. Jesus wants to love us. He wants us to experience that love. He wants us to know that love. And therefore, he wants us to be motivated by that love, inspired by that love to love each other. And that is ultimately what God's kingdom is all about. Now, we need to start displaying that in our relationships with each other. And actually demonstrate that when we have different views and different opinions. But it doesn't happen. You know, and so much, so many people get excommunicated over their beliefs. You know, mm. we see it even in the mystic community where people who are having a relationship with God and intimacy and are going to heaven and experience these things, you know, can't even stay in relationship with one another over what? Doctrine. Different beliefs. You know. Yeah, I have my own views and there are certain things I don't particularly believe, but that doesn't mean I can't be in relationship with those who do. But I'm excluded from quite a number of relationships over the things that I believe, you know, but I honor those who believe something different. They have the right to believe something different, but treat people with honor and respect and love, even if you disagree with some position over the bible or some position over doctrine or whatever it might be let's love one another and let's stay in relationship and not allow relationships to be broken over belief systems because that's not god's intention you know years back i was painting live at a conference at one of your conferences yeah he keeps bringing this back to me. He, I mean, he keeps bringing it back. He was talking about, you know, there's all the talk about the return of the prodigal. And he's like, <laughs> it's the return of the elder. <laughs> you know, it's the return of the elder brother. He said, brother against brother, you know, is like murder. And when the prodigal came back, the elder went off angry. Mm -hmm. And he showed me the vision of the elder you know, and I mean, which made the prodigal. I mean, he was like, where's my brother? Where's my brother? He was crying in his father's arms, but where's my brother who had taken off angrily? And he showed him coming back. And he showed me a vision of them both falling under a, you know, under, you know, acacia tree and embracing and the, and the prodigal throwing his coat of many colors, part of it over his shoulder, over his back. And it's, he says, this is what, this is the aim, the goal, brother embracing brother, <laughs> regardless, you know, none of the, yeah, you know, none of that anger over, yeah. I don't know, I don't know. I mean, ultimately don't matter. Yeah. You know, things, most of these things don't really matter. You know, when it boils down to it, most of us don't know everything. In fact, no one knows anything other than God. So ultimately, we're all trying to discover what the truth is. We're all, but if we stuck to Jesus being the truth, 
and realize the other things are minor issues let's not make major issues out of them because major issues divide if we see them as minor issues we stay in relationship can stay in love and not fall out over things which in the grand scheme of things don't really matter you know they don't matter because ultimately god's kingdom will fill the earth everyone will be our brother and sister so if we can't if we can't be in relationship with them now we're going to have to be in relationship with them one day so let's start now you know it's like we don't need to fall out you know, part of the problem is our people's identity has come from what they believe therefore their beliefs are very very important to them because their identity is based on them you know so you know, well who are you well i'm this and you know, mostly based on what i do or what a group i belong to or what color i am or what nation i was born in we define ourselves in certain ways which create division just by the fact that i separate myself you know i'm not an english christian you know, if I define myself a Christian, I'd rather f define myself as a follower of Jesus or God, whatever. But I'm I'm not English from that perspective. I might be born in England. It might be my nationality or British on my passport. But actually, that is nothing to do with my identity in God. And therefore, if someone else is born in the US or Canada or Australia or wherever else, you know, that doesn't define them in their identity in god it just says where they were born you know let's let's look at the bigger picture we're all god's children god wants us to behave to one another in love and to love one another and that will ultimately change the world when we can love and forgive and bless and encourage rather than pull down and criticize and be angry and bitter towards each other you know and it was no different in jesus's day obviously you know he faced all that in his ministry you know there were sects and fad saracies and sadducees and lawyers and elders and all of these different people all had different views rabbis believing one thing or another you know people opposing him criticizing him because he wasn't following their laws and all of this type of stuff was going on you know yeah and jesus understood and he loved them in spite of that but he challenged their beliefs so that they could see he was the truth so they could follow him out of those negative beliefs which were causing all the problems which were causing the division were causing the issues that they were facing in his day you know and jesus summed it up in love and I think that's the key. How do we love one another? Be well, we do it because we're inspired by the fact that he loves us. And that love is unconditional. And I think that to me is the biggest thing I think I've discovered in the last 10 years. Love is unconditional. If you put a condition on it, it's not love. It's a reward. God loves us unconditionally. No ifs and no buts religion will always place if and buts on on love well god will love you if you pray this prayer or if you believe this or god is love but yeah but he's just and he's holy and therefore he can't do this and people just totally misunderstand the reality that love has to be unconditional or it isn't love at all if god only loves me if i behave then he's rewarding me for my behavior he's not loving me in an unconditional way but religion always puts conditions on what god will do so god can only love you if you repent and ask jesus into your life or god will only love you if you behave in a certain way or any of those conditions that are put on it and most or if all religions have certain conditions placed on god's ability to love us if and god can't love us if and god yeah is love but 
and that just misrepresents him changes who he is from the world's perspective and the world let's face it has rejected that god it's rejected the god of anger and retribution and punishment you know it's a it's a god we call a god of love who we then present as something that is totally contradictory to love you know unconditional love for me is the biggest issue when it comes to understanding who god is and if it isn't unconditional love yeah it's not god you know and many many religious perspectives are not god you know they're man's ideas you know based in a god that essentially we've created in our own image you know, whether that be through whatever religion in including you know most christian denominations they're denominated around some version of god that fits into their doctrine and theology but god won't be put in a box or labeled he's god and he's love and that love is the light of the world and that love he wants to illuminate the truth so we can find him and discover the wonderful father that he is to us you know he's such a loving father who wants the best for all his children like i'm still working at a deeper relationship with the father but at times i feel myself pulling away when things are going on like yesterday he asked me to come sit with him in his garden and there was this bird that came by and it put this beautiful white fluffy robe on me and and as I was sitting there with the father it, it, you know my heart's cry is just to, to go deeper with him and and here in the past few months he's given me a a invitation to be his wife which is a totally different mindset than what I've ever experienced and and I know it's it's just working with him on such deeper levels and you know I'm I'm just trying to stay in his presence stay you know allow him to build the frequency my DNA in heaven so that I can function more effectively in the heavenlies to release and walk it out on the earth mm -hmm. and I don't know many times I just I get hung up in areas that I just need this more intimate personal talk with someone that says okay I, I'm, I'm here with the father and it's getting you know what does it mean to entangle with him what what does mm -hmm. you know I know he just requires me just to sit with him and it, it's it's not that I'm doing anything and okay now I'm going to get ready to cry because it's mm -hmm. you know it's it is very a very mm -hmm. intimate place with me and father yeah yeah and and as it should be you know, that's this is the relationship god wants you to have the deepest most intimate relationship that you could ever have with anyone yeah 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 and he's looking to reveal himself in such a way that that relationship becomes possible because we're not hung up on all of the issues that have separated us and divided us from him or that we fear him or we're afraid of getting intimate because oh well he'll really know me well he knows us anyway he loves us anyway that's unconditional therefore we don't need to be afraid to be real to be honest to share how we're feeling with him to know how he feels towards us to be inspired by that but it's real you know, the, this is real relationship. It's not pie in the sky, you know, and it's real. Therefore, it's real warts and all. Sometimes we struggle. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes things happen we don't understand. Sometimes things happen. And we're like, how could God let that happen? And we, we have questions. We have doubts and unbelief at times over things. But God understands all that. And he wants to draw us closer and closer deeper and deeper bringing us into a place where he truly reveals himself and then we begin to see ourselves reflected back in that wonderful mirror that is his face and we see ourselves the way he made us 
he reveals who we really are. He he wants us to have that intimacy. But obviously, that means change. It means transformation. Sometimes the crucible gets hot, you know, to, to release all this stuff that's in us that's hindering our relationship and our intimacy. But there's no guilt. There's no shame. There's no condemnation to the process. It's just love. It's love that inspired me to trust God and to open my heart to him and to open my life fully to him. It's love that took me to the judgment seat where he let the fire of his presence burn away the wood, hay and stubble of my scroll. It's love that brought me to the place where, you know, I totally surrender. You know, it was love. You know, if I if I feared him, I wouldn't have done it. You know, and he wants us to get to that place where the intimacy of his presence reveals the true nature of his heart. And we find that that is home. Yes, that's exactly true. That's where my relationship began is when I met the father. I knew I was home. I knew this was the place that I had been before before I'd ever come to the earth. And, you know, I just want to be effective for him. And uh, he's he's given me an administrative mountain and he, he gave it to me years ago and I've still yet to embrace it. But I'm starting to understand more and more that it is in the relationship with my relationship with him and how I'm changing and how I'm viewing other people. And as I am allowing him to love me, then I, I have the wherewithal and the change within my own heart to love others on the earth. And uh, I, I just feel like this is such an, an amazing journey. It's been a hard journey, but it's been such, I, I love the change. I, I love change. I embrace change. It, it's hard. <laughs> I have to walk through the fire. I have to, you know, embrace the triggers and all, all that comes with it and and the responsibility. That's what that's what really weighs heavily on me. And I think that's why I haven't well, it must not be time for me to engage the administrative. I'm be, beginning to get more understanding of what it is. Uh here recently I was on a call with you and I was just listening to some new people and my heart was going out to them thinking, oh, you know, they really need someone that would just, you know, it, it, they could just sit with. And I thought, oh Lord, that's not me. Is it, you know, I'm not ready for anything like that. And yet, you know, I would love to do my part. And, and yet it came back around that I felt father's heart saying, administrate it, Jackie, you know, mm -hmm. pray, in my, get in my heart and brood in my heart with it and birth what they need. You may not be the answer, but you you have my heart in the matter. And that's what this administration is going to be. That's what the creativity that you've, uh, that's you've that been locked up in you has yet to be released. That, that creative uh, part of his kingdom that, that he manifests himself to people to greater levels and you know I, I'm I'm just trying to he's doing such a, a work within me he he always has I'm just been a very passionate person I've just needed a lot of um, connection connecting the dots yeah, and yeah. you know becoming more comfortable in my own design my own uniqueness my own you know person where the church world wanted to make me into their image and likeness. And one thing, when you say, when you were talking about love, uh, when I when I quote that scripture now, love covers a multitude of sins. I, I see it in such a different, different dimension now, a different way, a different, you know, realizing that the sin, sin is nothing more than what is separating me from God's heart. You know, we've made, you know, it's all, it's like you, you started with. It's about the separation. It's about the division. Father's calling us in, all of us, into a deeper relationship with him, which then will manifest the deeper relationships with those on the earth. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Any sense we don't know who we are, 
will keep us from him. Yeah, and you know, sin is not is not a verb which is a doing word. It's a noun which is a thing word. And actually, yeah, we've we've lost our identity. Therefore, we don't know who we are, and that keeps us from a relationship with God because we don't think we're worthy, or we don't think we deserve it, or we're not good enough for it, or we we're too good for it. We don't want it. We don't need it. And all these mindsets, all these ways of looking at it just keep us from the relationship that God always had in mind for us and has always prepared for us that there would be a place where we would return to that place of restored innocence, face-to-face -face relationship to which all of those things, which are lies basically that keep us from that. Paul said we're alienated in our own minds. God has never been separated from us we've separated from him or we we these things keep think we think they keep us from him but actually god embraces us and receives us as we are and then in that relationship of intimacy reveals who we really are and then we begin to come into agreement and alignment with that we resonate with it that frequency of the truth changes us and we're entrained to come into alignment with who we always were in the first place and lost sight of and forgot and missed completely, you know? So I think it's not behavior that keeps us from God. It's the mindset that stops us accepting who we really are. And that's why God wants to renew our minds. You know, he wants to renew our minds to the true nature of who he is and who we are. He wants us to realize that the only thing that keeps us from him is ourselves. You know, it's the way we perceive ourselves or we perceive things. And once we begin to perceive the right things and the right truth, then we'll begin to realize that there's nothing that can separate us from God. You know, including ourselves, ultimately, because God's love will never fail, will never give up, you know, the psalmist the david said where can i go from your presence if i go into the grave you're there if i go into the highest heavens you're there and yes. that's what we need to discover god is there yes. in him we live and move and have our being we can't be separated from him other than in our own minds you know he is never separating from us You know, Mike, yeah. out of our bellies and flow rivers of living water. Yeah. I'm still uh, telling you how I've been experiencing. I could just be driving in an area and this, it's like, <laughs> Mel, I don't know what it is. It just motion or something, love, whatever, just like flows literally from me into the area. And I'm like, oh. What, 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 <laughs> what is it? And I just, okay, <laughs> you know, I yield to it. Bless them all, you know, and it's like, it totally dumbfound me, dumbfounds me, it amazes me, but there's something going on that my actual physical being in this earth, he released, he's flowing something through me. And it's like, oh, okay, okay, <laughs> you yeah. know. Yeah, and ultimately, that's an overflow of our relationship with God, you know, because that river is a river of life. That river is flowing out of heaven. That river is flowing in us and through us and around us. And whatever we have in that life, in that relationship with God is going to flow around us and through us. And we just have to be a willing channel. We just have to make sure there's nothing blocking, hindering. And the, the closer we get to God, the easier it is for that to flow. And the flow brings life wherever it goes. If you go back to, you know, the, the whole passage in Ezekiel where it talks about the, the, the river flowing under the, the temple door out of the east gate. And, you know, it was, it was ankle deep and knee deep and waist deep until it was flowing and out of our depths in it completely submerged in it but it brought life wherever it went and that's a description of us 
because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes. We have life in us. We just have to make sure there's nothing stopping the flow. Just yeah. let it flow. Yes, I love that, Mike. Let it flow. Let it go and let it flow. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, but of course, we've had all sorts of things that have been blockages to the flow of that in us. And of yeah. course, that's what that's, God's love is there to remove all those blockages and hindrances and everything else of our experiencing it and our being able to see it released. And ultimately, they rivers of living water flow from our innermost being. And the union that we have, the spirit soul body, enables that flow. And if we're divided and separated within ourselves, and if we're broken and fragmented, it's hard for it to flow. It just it just gets dammed up within us. But the more whole and the more healing there is, yes. the flow just sort of naturally comes from our innermost being. Yes, and I, I'm able to pick up on Father's heart more freely in areas like like Pam was saying, how she was feeling and sensing that bubbling up in an area. Uh, I was praying with my husband recently, and I kind of flow with him on his his and praying with him but I I, I do it a little differently these days uh, mostly in agree agreement with father's heart and releasing but I was spilling and sensing a broader areas of his heart and there was just a lots of you know I, I'm not a political sort of gal but you know it, it was it had been really weighing on me the condition that we're in and it, it always comes back around to me okay you know, you, he, he did, what did he do with Abraham? What did he do with Esther? What did he do? You know, he's looking for that one that will be in his heart, releasing from his heart. And so I, I began releasing, you know, for the homeless and for the, uh, the children and, you know, we have to watch care over the children in this day and time and for the elderly. It just it was just a barrage of saying many, many areas. And I was like, whoa, where's this coming from? And it was like, well, that's exactly the process. And when I hear many of the calls, I always go back to hearing you say, and I'd get frustrated at first, my first years with you. He says that all the time. It's all about the relationship. It's all about the relationship. And then it's like, it's all about the relationship. <laughs> it is so about the relationship. You know, if I don't do anything on the earth for Father, He still wants relationship with me. Yeah. And my heart is awakening that this was what I was born for, is this relationship with God. You know, and I, it it just blows me away still to think that 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 He wants me, that He always wanted me that I was with him before I ever came to the earth and that that all all that I've experienced in this life he's use, using it for the good he's using it to change me he's using it to soften me and make me more into his image and likeness and you know I, I just want everyone to know yeah this journey's hard but it's the greatest thing that you'll ever experience in this life there's not there's not a no possession, no person, no no situation that's any greater than the relationship with the Father. That the, that the finished work is allowed us to come. That that's what I started with with Father with this. I said, Father, I want to know everything. When when he when I asked him if I could leave the local church, you know, I was married and I, I, said, I told my husband, I said, I feel like I just want to know God. I, I want away from all this drama. And I, and I said, I'm going to step away. I asked Father. He said, yeah, I could step away. And then I said, Father, I just want to know everything. I said the cross at the time, that the cross represents that I can, that I can live in on the earth, that I can experience. Oh, my, eight years later. And I'm just begun. I'm just begun. Yeah. Sorry, Mike. I'm a little more. That's fine. 
you expressive in my, I'm, I'm an emotional person in a, in a balanced way i'm i'm prophet mm -hmm. and a redemptive gift I'm, I'm understanding i have all of them and father wants me to cultivate all of them in my life but um that's been the dominating one and it carries a lot of emotions with it when they're able to be released and you know a, a lot of a lot of time i'm not able to express myself in the passion that's that's within me and i'm getting well, no you, no your tears are collected and they yeah. have value the salt there's a level of salt in the tears for whatever reason that <laughs> that has value that's oh that's i love that to understand it i love that you're exactly right our tears have salt oh yes oh yes so I just let it flow, let it go, let it be, let me be, <laughs> just be in him, I in him, he in me. My kids call me a crybaby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong in, in expressing our emotions. God's given those emotions to help us feel love and to express love and Therefore, we should feel, in a sense, things. You know, when we feel the Father's heart, then that is an emotional response. He, yeah. he was moved with compassion. You know, God's love is, is very real and practical and emotional. You know, we don't need to be af af afraid or ashamed of, of expressing emotion, feeling emotion, doing things because we're moved by those emotions. Yeah, you know, that's how God moves our hearts to feel his heart. Yes. Yeah. You know, and that ultimately we don't want to be doing things out of logic and reason purely. You know, it's it's love that motivates us, and love is an emotional, expressive way of re releasing that to other people, you know. So absolutely, you know, being moved. And emotional is part of feeling the heart of God and knowing the, the love that God carries and feels for all of us. Yeah. And then learning to be all things to all people is something that he, you know, that I, I constantly keep before me is learning to love. It's just so people are so different. Situations are so different. And, you know, there's one call that I'm on and many times I have gotten frustrated because it's like, where are we going, guys? Where are we going? You know, let's stay in Father's heart. What? What? And then Father always brings it back around. Jackie, I'm teaching you to love. I'm teaching you to embrace. When I look at each one of us, we're all so different, but yet we all carry this level of expression, whether it's poetry, whether it's music, whether it's uh, mm -hmm. art, science, in the way that we're functioning. And... And Father says, see, I love this, Jackie. It's beautiful to me. You you want it all to be the same. That's a, that's a mindset. <laughs> and I, I, this is me telling you, that's how I love each and every person because you are so unique, so wonderfully made. I didn't make a mistake. So learn to flow. Learn to find your place, your position, and release from that position. And so, you know, I, I'm learning to to be me and learning to share uh, what I, what father has, has me and has created me for in that setting. And it goes back to relationship. You know, that's, I suppose that's where I've been hung up most of my life is relationship. And, it, and if you recall the redemptive gift profit, that's the weak area is the relational connections or, you know, being in relationship whatever the hindrance, whatever, there's been many, <laughs> whatever the blockages, whatever the forgiveness, whatever the attitude, whatever the expectation, but I'm finding, wow, that's Father's way. That is Father's way. Yeah. 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 God is relationship. Yes. Yeah. He's Father, Son, Spirit in union, in oneness, in relationship. And he wants us to be like him, included in him, in that relationship, as well as then being in relationship with all our brothers and sisters and others who, you know, 
God, God has made for relationship. The whole universe is a relational being, a place where all of us can engage. Um, and obviously, the opposite of that, robs, kills and destroys relationship, breaks mm -hmm. it, looks to damage it, you know, and our relationship with creation itself. You know, God made the universe for us to be have a relationship with it. Uh, and we've disconnected from that relationship and god is looking to bring us back into relationship with creation creation is longing waiting for the revealing of the sons of god you know to be restored into that relationship again so that we're in that union and oneness with god with ourselves with all creation um, so that creation can be restored you know and we've sort of lost touch with so much that God is now bringing us back and connecting us with. You know, I remember the first time I engaged creation in a way I was in the Father's garden. I was just completely at peace, so much at peace, I just spaghettified and my whole being went out and touched creation. I I was in wonder and awe of it, but also so sad that it was waiting for us and longing for us to come back into our sonship and relate to it again in the right way. And I felt that and I felt it's grown mm -hmm. and that motivated me. It, it's, it's, it's sort of drawn me towards reconnecting to creation. But I, but before I can reconnect to creation, I have to reconnect to myself, reconnect yeah. to God. And in that union, then my connection to creation is established. And, you know, when I felt it, and I felt it quite a number of times since in similar experiences, each has been deeper. And I've realized just how important sonship is for the restoration of all things and for creation itself to be set free from its bondage to decay and corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God, into our glory, into our essence of who we are, our identity and creation are totally linked you know ev even figuratively man was made from the dust of the ground from the earth you know because that's a symbol of a created thing creation itself that we are connected to intimately with um, and god is so much wanting us to rediscover um, and creation itself is just waiting and longing for us to come back into our full identity and to fully understand ourselves again and to know ourselves and to know that role we have within creation and it is a relationship you know yeah. you can't you can't long for something unless you're sentient there's something that is longing that we can be drawn to and reconnect with and re-engage with yeah yes but it is all relational, you know, it's, it's all a relationship. We tend to think of things as inanimate or, you know, but actually, no, God has created all things to have relationship. Yeah. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.